This fun condensed gothic, also known as gas pipe or stove pipe because of its shape, is a great utility alphabet and can be a nice complement to casuals and scripts. Once we dial in the tight spacing and rounds formula of each letter, we'll be able to translate them more easily to many other lettering styles. This is a very uniform mechanical alphabet. Some helpful ways to create a memory formula for these letters are to see them as vertical columns with equal space between the letters and the negative space inside the letters. And finally, creating an imaginary one-third lines for some of the in-strokes. It's a great idea to be um, really organized with all of your equipment, brushes, things like that. And um, you know, I just have a tray system with some glossy magazines to pallet it on. Uh, everything's in a squirt bottle. I've got a shallow dish for cleaning out a cup. It's actually a, a food container with a concaved bottom for cleaning the brushes. Um, so I don't, so I'm not jamming it down like that into the into the uh, bottom of the cup because that will bend the uh, ends of the brush. And so, and I have a, a squirt bottle full of lacquer thinner that I just fill up one, one corner like that. And then I'll just take my brush and just dab it in on the side like that. If I have a bigger brush, I'll go up over the top of this concave part, which really helps clean it out real well. I'll even flood it down on the magazine like that to get it out of the heel of the brush. So it's completely clean before I put uh, in it, before I store it with Neat's foot oil. Uh, and then I also have a paper towel where I wipe things off. And when I'm ready to brush, I have a uh, bunch of uh, non-wax Dixie cups like this. And what I do is I just cut a bunch of them, uh, the edges of them like that, just one edge real quick like that. That, keeps, that gives a nice sharp edge for the brush to be palleted on. Boom, like that. And so I just keep a bunch of those ready. And then uh, I have all my little quarter pint cans of uh, one-shot lettering enamel with a... Uh, I bolt um, uh, through the top, I pre-drill that, then I just run the eye bolt through, and then inside of the can I have a 3 8 nut, which creates a rattle, a rattle can effect, which knocks out all those solids down at the bottom, gets it all stirred up, and then I just keep refilling these. When I run out, I have, a, I have larger quart sizes, because I do bigger work too, when I'm doing lettering and or whatever smaller work and I just pour out some of the paint into the cup like a so and then um, and then I uh, use um, one shot 6000 um, flow enhancer I, I have it already in uh, bottles labeled I have all my bottles labeled uh, and then I just go ahead and I put some in and I get uh, for lettering I get the, the paint uh, to the point where it's just starting to drizzle, just starting to drizzle. That look, that looks pretty good, right there. And, uh, and then I test it out on the on the magazine to see how it's going to pal it out. So again, I don't jam my brush down at the bottom of the cup because that's going to fray the ends of these brushes. And this is a Kafka lettering quill. Be using a lettering quill number four for these lettering samples, and then I just go ahead and I palette, get get the paint deep inside the um, heel and middle of the brush. And also, this helps get it palleted real well. And then from that point on, I'm just going to use this edge of the cup to keep a nice palette. And for these letters, I'm going to be use I'm going to use um, a relaxed a relaxed chisel. So a force chisel is something like, like that where I'm just I'm trying to get as, as maxed out as I can possibly get so it's fanned out like that. Um, and then a relaxed chisel is where I, you, you pallet it but then you just kind of let it relax a little bit and we're going to be working off just on the tip. We're just going to be working just off the tip like this. We're not going to be pushing down like that and using the whole brush. This this letter this lettering style we're just going to use we're just going to use a semi relaxed tip of the brush and then we're just going to be we're just going to be running we're just going to be running off the tip like this 
I use gloves because I end up getting paint all over me, not to mention these toxic chemicals that I'm using. And I want to actually keep my liver, so I just I glove up whenever I'm using these uh, solvent-based uh, uh, materials. And then I have a cotton glove, which um, helps me glide across my flat mall stick. I put a, uh, some bun I, I, I rounded this part off where my hand goes for comfort, and then I and then I put some uh, uh, some like padding around it so it's 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 comfortable it's a comfortable grip and then this part here I can slide up and down I could use it as a straight edge I could use it on edge for uh, doing line work like this or long strokes borders anything like that but for the most part it acts as a really great surface for table like almost like a tabletop but keeps it up off the the uh, keeps it up off the the surface of the panel and you can use a round mall stick, and I have one of those, and I used to use those all the time. You grab it here, and then you wrap your finger or set it on there. Um, but to me, it's, it's very restricting. It's a very restricting, uh, almost feels like I have handcuffs on. As soon as I, as soon as I use the, uh, as soon as I started using this flat mall stick, I just went, it was like a bird being freed from a cage. I just could I could go all over the place up and down it was just it was just so freeing so this is about mm, this is about uh, seven eighths width by about five sixteenths inch thick and it's about thirty inches long I dropped it on the floor and then up here what I did was I wrapped it with tape conically so it, it made um, it made like a, a uh, ridge on the top for my to be my absolute pivot point, and then I dipped it in um, in plasti dip several times. Just di kept dipping it in plasti dip, and that's that's made a nice grippy grippy uh, uh, um, end for it. If you're interested in that, then once I've cleaned all the uh, one-shot lettering enamel out of the out of this brush. I really want to keep it really clean. And then I take some Neat's foot oil. You can find this either online or at any local uh, store that carries any kind of saddle or cattle supply, um, and or you know even feed a feed store. And then I just you know press it down into the into the uh, heel of the brush, make, it, make sure it gets down deep in there. And then I just wipe off the excess a little bit. And then I, um, you know, with a clean hand, part of your hand, I just get it to a chiseled, get it to its chiseled point, because this is what I want it to be like forever. It's like that. And that'll keep it nice and oiled and a nice in a nice shape as, as well and I put it and I put it in my then I put it in my sign kit in it I put these uh, these are those these are those spring type brush holders that come you know that you can fo buy fold you know you can fold them in half like a billfold thing and with a lid and I just took the lids off and then I just they ha actually fit in this uh, tackle box and so now I just set those inside this where the springs go, like a so, and they keep real nice and flat, and you know there's nothing else touching them, and uh, and it, and, it, and they keep them real nice and safe inside, like so. Just wanted to go over the three fingered method real quick, and uh, how beneficial it is to use that method for especially for this kind of a letter since the turns are so tight and um, the the pencil method which is this method like this where we're hold where we're holding it with like more like a pencil like this is uh, is going to be a real challenge in order in, in, in if, if we're trying to make these these especially trying to make these rounds uh, using this type of uh, 
finger hold uh, might might get us might get us a little a little ways, but there's a lot of there's a lot of spinning the hand, a lot of you know motion that makes it really difficult to get that turn and control it. Um, whereas the three fingered method where we hold where we hold the brush like this with our fingers it really is freeing for one thing um, it, it really gives you a lot of freedom of movement you can actually spin the brush clockwise and counterclockwise in any direction you need to go and it's great when you when it's when you really need to have the brush perpendicular to the to the surface of the um, panel, and so basically all it is is just holding it with your with your thumb, forefinger, and middle finger. And that's that's basically all all it is doing, and you'll you'll get to the point where you can really feel how. It really gives you a lot of control. It, uh, you know, you can just spin it like this in your hand, and and that really is where you want to be at as far as how how to hold the brush in this three fingered method. And this really gives you a lot of finite control, super finite control. You you can just come around, down, and you know, obviously this is this is the. But this is the part where it shines right here. You get your brush vertical, come up over, and spin it clockwise, and so on. So I just wanted to um, show the benefit of the three-fingered. I'm just going to grab my mall stick. This is even easier with the mall stick. So with the mall stick, now you're really, you, you got all this nice um, sliding ability up and down the, the length of the mall stick. It's flat. Um, and, and you have, it's, it's like being on a table, but raised off, which, is, which even give, gives you even more support. And sometimes I will, I will um, set my, one of my fingers against the panel, which locks me in. Like I, I set my middle finger on the panel and then I've got my cup, I've got my cup and my middle finger sitting on, on the panel below, which, which gives me a lot of stability this way. And it also sets it up off the, the surface and gives you a lot, of, a lot of great control. A lot of great control. Yeah, that's even a lot better. It feels, feels comfortable and confident. I've got a lot of locked in control I really I really feel like I've got a good control of things nothing's slipping or sliding or awkward feeling it just feels very comfortable so that's a real benefit of being able to use the three fingered method especially for these super condensed tight radius uh, condensed alphabets. Some of the uh, main strokes of this alphabet that are ones that we kind of have to get used to um, after f after uh, execute them a few times. Um, probably the main one is the uh, first round over on a on a round stroke like, like let's say an O you know a letter like O or something like that where um, the way we start that is we start out with a slightly angled brush like that it's not a 45 it's just a slightly angled brush and and we, what we're going to do is make a radius and that's the goal is just to make our an, the outside radius at that point and that 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 flows into our uh, vertical stroke so we're going to just start out with a slightly angled right at the top line slightly angled come up and over and then drop down into a vertical now this isn't necessarily trying to get this inside 
radius this this in this case we're going to do an eighth inch space in between uh, the two strokes I'm saying this is an O this is mostly to get this outside radius to look uniform that's our goal with that because when we do our the next stroke our connecting stroke we're going to actually create that eighth inch radius by by holding our uh, brush vertical and we're going to touch down inside that stroke come up over the the uh, guideline just slightly and then we're going to rotate our brush at a uh, counterclockwise position where it's horizontal and it's going to be a hard 90 here and that's how we're going to get that little radius inside radius and also this outside radius so that's going to be our first stroke is going to look like that and then you know obviously we're going to come down here and finish this off but I'm just showing this top part right now so then we're going to come up and over and at this point we're going to make a hard 90 like this and pull it straight down and we're going to, what we're trying to what we're trying to our goal is to try to you know make this inside radius and this line parallel with the with the previous you know this stroke parallel and your best bet is always to be in front of your letter so in other words your face is directly facing directly so that way you know you're making a vertical stroke and so um, for example this O if we were to execute it would be that round at the top down now we're going to spin counterclockwise to make the radius below. And we're concentrating on this radius when we're doing that. And then we're not so much concentrating on this inside radius because that's this radius is going to take care of that. The outside radius is going to take care of the inside radius. Where we're going to take care of that inside radius is the is the second stroke. So that again it comes vertical brush, comes up and over, hard ninety down to a um, clockwise spin clockwise spin with our brush and then um, so that's our that's our that's our basic goal that's our basic goal is is uh, so we start out with with a uh, with our brush you know slightly slightly um, chiseled to its natural place not forced and we're going to go and we're going to go slight angle up and over down spin counterclockwise look thinking of that radius in there and then vertical brush up and over hard 90 and then another hard 90 clockwise spin to a 90 and you, that this is where we want to think about the inside not about the outside this at this point we want to think about our inside radius uh, maintaining eighth inch and maintaining a nice um, radius on the inside because it's a lot easier just to clean this up afterwards then uh, that's pretty much going to be always our, our stroke for the rounds on the tops of our, le our round letters for example like a lowercase a which is actually kind of a difficult letter to execute in this alphabet the a and the s are going to be two uh, rascals so we're going to do a slight angle up and over come down a third of the way third meaning one third two third and finally so a third both directions and that's what's nice about this letter is it's very mechanical and then we're just going to do the same thing this is the, all this is is the O so it's, it's a very mechanical thing it's this letter is is the A is just simply the O in mini form is is in in in, in this sense and the and the lowercase o is the same as the uppercase o, and we're always maintaining that uh, consistent letter space and gap the negative space inside. So the um, the lowercase a is going to be our most difficult one to execute. 
So that's really that's really the main thing we want to focus on is that is that round that round. The rest are going to be basically you know vertical strokes, you know coming down off the line, just pulling a line straight down and cleaning up at the bottom. <clears throat> then the next type of stroke to be mindful of is the connecting strokes like for B and H, uh, which are the coming off at a 45 degree angle off of the main stroke. Let's say this is a B. So we come off at a 45 degree angle out of this stroke to that top line and then doing the exact same thing we did here but we're just instead of coming in with a vertical brush we're coming with a 45 and the reason why is because we want to make a nice little thin connecting stroke at the top that's the goal for this is to make that nice little thin connecting stroke and that's how you achieve that is with a is coming out of there at a 45 and also coming from the bottom at a 45 in a mirrored image so this 45 will be going in this direction so you just come out of this and it creates the same the same letter f connecting form a same connecting form top and bottom and there's only two letters that you need to do this with one is the B the, the lowercase B and the other is the uh, lowercase P so you're not going to be doing that that often. And then the other, the, the trickiest stroke, the trickiest stroke of, of all this is the, uh, is the opposite direction stroke. Like, for example, the G, well, the D, the G, and the Q. And those are the only uh, letters that you will, will need to do this with, which is... Uh, we want a similar kind of thin connecting stroke like we have with this B. We're going to do that, let's say, with the D. Whereas we all, we're going to start out with the corner of our brush. We're not going to make we're not going to make this super uh, thick uh, stroke here at this point. We're just going to come down and just almost like we're just coming straight down. Let's say this is the D. And at the bottom here, we're going to make the same hook we did with the A. We'll go with that too. So now with this con contracted brush like this, semi-contracted, now what we're going to do is with a horizontal brush, we're going to make a, uh, an eighth inch radius right here. And what that does is not only controls our inside radius, what we want it to be, but it also makes a thin stroke that matches this bottom stroke, that matches this stroke and this stroke. All the connecting strokes will be a thin stroke. So we start out with a horizontal brush, touch down and spin hardcore uh, uh, clockwise direction with our brush touching down coming up and over and spinning and just all we're thinking about is making a nice eighth inch radius right in there that matches the bottom and the thought is if you went all the way around and you came down and connected with that you make you making this you're making this parallel you know, sp get space just like you did this in this negative space, which is eighth inch with eighth inch radius. Now you wouldn't do this stroke because it'd be a waste of time because you're going to take care of that with the vertical stroke of the D. But that's the idea in, in our minds that we're trying to we're trying to achieve. So from there, you just take your vertical stroke and you just follow that line, come down, and clean it up. And the um, and so those those are the main the main tricky ones, and obviously the S is going to be a tricky one. We'll go over that clearly because that's that's uh, S is always a troublemaker no matter what we're doing. So um, those are the main strokes that are kind of mm, kind of going to be tricky, but um, they're very at the same time they're very mechanical. And so uh, this again, this this stroke here. Let's say we're going to do. Let's say we're going to do a G. So we're going to just going to touch down with the corner of our brush and bring it down because we don't want to make a we don't want to make a big mess right here. We just want it to be almost there, almost to be nothing there, a blank a blank canvas. So we're just we're, but we're just making a slight radius here because we do need this little radius on the outside. And then we're going to come down and we go above the baseline and make our 
hook. And the hook is just, the hook is basically spinning counterclockwise and letting up off the brush to make this inside eighth inch radius. That's what this little hook at the bottom is all about. You just, we let up off the brush, but we're also going, we're also at complete vertical by the time we get around this thing. And that, that helps us make a nice eighth inch radius right in there. And then, and then with this contracted brush, we come uh, to the top with a, uh, at, the, at the horizontal level, come up and over. We're making that outside radius and the inside radius like that. We can stop right there. And then we can finish off this G by tucking it right into that line, pull down, and spin clockwise halfway in between the two guidelines, come up above this guideline, lining ourselves up with this first stroke, and then spin counterclockwise to round that off. We're thinking about this radius, but we're also thinking about this. Thinking about this inside eighth inch radius pretty much takes care of this outside radius. It's a lot easier to touch the outside radius than it is up to touch up the inside radius. That inside radius is really what the eye sees and, and, it, and impacts uh, the cleanness of the letter. N not, I mean, the outside obviously does too, but that inside negative space really determines the uh, balance and, uh, and, and uh, execution of the letter and, the, and you know that it's uniform throughout. Then once we get these um, letter structures uh, memorized for each letter, uh, we can start to alter the letter. Say we wanted to extend it and make it a wider letter, we, we can translate that spacing just by simply by by saying to ourselves, well, I'll go from instead of an eighth inch gap, I'm still going down to our one third, but instead of an eighth inch gap in here, let's say we'll do, let's say I'm just going to make it a half inch gap. So I come up and over, and instead of going that eighth inch, I just go a half inch pull around, do the exact same thing as what we've been doing. And then, um, it, it, you know, at a half inch, we can, you know, if we want to, <laughs> we can still do a 45 here. Ish. Come down. Counterclockwise. And then whip up. Or we can, um, for the, especially for like the uh, lowercase a and the s, uh, lowercase s and uppercase s actually, um, we could go horizontal with all of our all of those strokes. So let's say we just let's say we wanted to go wider than half inch, or even just go half inch, but just say. Well, I don't really like that 45 on the A and the S. It's not working. So let's say we could just we can just adapt that to say I'm going to go this. That's about three quarters of an inch. Come down. Stuart. It's just our same letter structure. It's just so we're adding a new space inside, a greater space. That's all we're doing. But in the case of of the A, for example, and the S. We'll go horizontal with this stroke, the middle stroke. So, but then we can just say, well, I'll just, I'll just repeat my stroke up here, the top stroke, bring it down, same thing, and then spin counterclockwise, and then just taper up, and then from there we just, just like the top stroke, we can just vertical, vertical brush, come up and over, horizontal and taper down just just like this one which makes more like kind of like um euro style typeface and from there once we once we've established that we can we can you know make it as extended as we want we can go let's say we wanted to go always one third 
So that's, that stroke will always be at one third, which is neat because it's just mechanical at that point, at this point. And we say to ourselves, well, I want this line of copy for some reason to be, you know, let's say like super, super extended. Oops. So super extended. And in your style, that just goes actually goes straight down. But I'm just adding that little uh, flare at the bottom, just because you know we're kind of keeping the same uh, some of the same components. And then here, just it's at that halfway point. And we just come around. We're just going to follow our stroke above, spin counterclockwise, taper up. That's basically our 45 connection there. It's just more of a taper than a than a 45, keeping the brush uh, vertical. And then this is just a vertical brush, just like we did this top stroke. So it's very, very, very much the same. But this this comes down uh, in order to you know to make that that should have been a little more that should have more more tapered. So we're just. So the idea is that now we can just we can just we've got the spacing locked in, and that's the nice thing about that condensed is that it, it really forces us to to make the, that spacing dial in that spacing. To dial in that spacing is is what is what we're we're is going to benefit us. When we translate it into other typefaces, and so that's more like about it's about inch and three quarters, and so now we're just going to continue to do the same thing. We're just going to come, you know, just just like we were doing our top stroke, and come down. Then counterclockwise, taper up, and then same with this. We're just going to do just like our top, up, top stroke, vertical brush, pull straight horizontal, and then taper down. And that's that's a, that's like the Euro style. I got that one. <laughs> As you can see, that line below, I got that a little off, um, but. The idea is that it's it's all translatable. We can make it one third. Horizontal. Spin. Whip to the right, and that's about maybe three and about three and a half inches, and then just line ourselves up with that stroke down, spin counterclockwise. Time I'm going to hit the line. <laughs> Then I'm just using my mall stick now to create this this uh, horizontal line all the way down, taper up. Same with the top. I mean the middle stroke. It's vertical brush up, over, horizontal, and taper down. So you can see how how you just you just can translate that spacing into <laughs> infin infinitive infinity and beyond. And another fun thing we can do is not change the width at all, keep it the exact same eighth inch gap inside the inside the negative space of the letter, but change the height. So 
for example, we're still going to have, you know, let's say this is our guidelines, that's the top base, you know, we're still going to have a one-third for this A, let's say, we're still going to come down a third, it's about there, and then we're just going to maintain our same eighth inch gap, come up, over, turn, down, kick it to the right, and the exact same, we're all we're doing was just translating it. In our mind we're keeping those, that third and halves and you know the formula that we've we've established in this with this letter and come down here 45 follow the upper stroke at eighth inch gap make a hook and we can go off and do a, <laughs> we can do an even taller one so but still maintaining that eighth inch that eighth inch uh, space inside that negative space inside so we're just going to go down, kind of have to find out where a third is here. That's about a third there. Um, and then, I mean, if you wanted to make some really tall letter, it's it's just a formula. That's all it is. Each letter now has its own locked-in formula, and we just we just follow that rule every time we do something. Come down, stop. Spin it off to the right, make our little bottom whip on the right. And we come down, make a 45, and we line ourselves up with that, and also our eighth inch gap. So we're just going to come down here, round it off, eighth inch gap, and then just make a hook. It's just all it is. We're just extending what we've what we've been doing. That's all we're doing. And we're just maintaining that eighth inch gap. I mean, if we uh, if we really want to get if we really want to get uh, tall, <laughs> I think at this point I would need to mark where a third would be, so it'd be in there because I'm going to really lose it when I get my hand in the way. So let's say once, but once we got that third point, that's third registration, then we can just go right to it just like we've been doing down all it is is just the width of the uh, relaxed chiseled brush and then we um, this one is going to be a little tricky because I think what we'll have to do is come up and over establish our eighth inch round over come down I'm going to have to stop, and what I'm going to have to do is, I'm going to have to spin my um, my square mall stick so I can make this long, super long stroke, and all I have to do is just put my little finger on the outside and just let the brush just glide on down. Stop just before I get to the bottom, like that. And I've made a perfect vertical stroke, and then I just need to taper that off. And same thing, just a 45 off of that. So I'm just going to come a 45, and then I'm going to line myself up with with this stroke and an eighth inch gap inside. So just come down. Come over, 45, start heading down. Get down to the bottom. I do a spin counterclockwise, pull up on my brush to a vertical, and make a little hook. Now, that probably wouldn't be very legible, but just for fun, it shows how all it is is a formula. That's all this is. You know, the third here, 45 there, keep the eighth inch space there. That's all this is. 
is just nailing in and, and memorizing a formula, and it can be translated at, from, in any directions and warped and twist and, and just have fun with it. And then finally, uh, another helpful production tool is uh, you, know, you know some cellophane tape, like scotch tape, where uh, you can apply it onto your guidelines. Put it on your guidelines, and it really speeds up your production time, your lettering time. And I like to uh, fold a tab like this on one end, so that's so that doesn't stick to the surface. It makes it a lot easier to pull it off afterwards. And this particularly works great if you're doing all caps, all capital letters. Um, it's not so good if you're if you have a lot of lowercase descending strokes. Uh, P's, Q's, G's, Y's. Um, it makes it actually makes it a little bit more come. Little it actually is. Uh, I'm not sure if it, it makes it any faster. But um, if you have caps, then this is. You don't have to worry about your in strokes anymore. Um, you just you just need to make sure we stay on the line. And. Um, You know, we still need to we still need to be mindful of being on the line, so that we don't lose our our letter uh, our stroke width. We want our st we want our stroke width to be um, uh, the same throughout the the word the lettering. But uh, when it comes to you know. Just go right on through. Just go right on through. You don't have to think about it. And uh, same with the tops. You can just um, pull right from above the guideline. And right on through really picks up, especially if you have a lot of copy, if you're doing something that's, uh, you have a lot of lines of copy. It's a great way to pick up your speed. And this is half inch tape, clear. There's all kinds of tape though. And then if you have an O or anything that extends above or beyond the, the tape line, then after the tape's pulled, then you just round off the top and bottom because we go beyond the... on the guidelines for uh, O's and S's Q like that 
um, and then these little tabs on here it's easy to just grab those pull those off and you got a nice you got a nice uh, Got a nice straight line. It was you didn't have to you didn't have to finish off the ends because um, that tape line made it nice for you. And then uh, all you have to do is just round these O's off.